the time has come for us to revisit your favorite topic, face mites. Don't look at me, you're the one who clicked into this video knowing full and well what you were getting yourself into. A talk on those freaky deaky demodex. Yeah, I said it, they're weird. I talk about these face mites a fair amount whenever I talk about rosacea because they can play a role in rosacea severity. If you biopsy certain skin lesions of rosacea, you might see a boatload of these mites and medications that lower the burden of the mites can really be helpful for rosacea. But rosacea aside, what exactly is the deal with these face mites that we all pretty much have? Demodex face mites. All right, so when we're born, when we're babies, we really don't have very many of them. But as we go throughout our life and become adults, we start getting a lot of them. They are commensal, meaning they live neutrally on us. They don't cause any problems for us. They don't benefit us. Likewise, we don't cause problems for them and we don't benefit them. We're just two, two lost souls swimming in a fish bowl. They're normal to have on our skin and they exist in the pilosebaceous unit. That's basically your pore, the hair follicle. There are two types of Demodex mites, Demodex folliculorum and Demodex brevis. Demodex brevis is a little shorter than folliculorum. Demodex folliculorum lives in the follicles of your lashes and digests keratin material, dead skin cells. Demodex brevis exists in the follicles like on your face, your pores, and your scalp. It feeds off of the cells that make up your oil glands. Demodex mites are primarily found on facial skin, your cheeks, your forehead, the sides of your nose, your outer ear, and of course your lashes. Most people go their entire lives and never really have an issue with Demodex mites. However, things can take a turn and Demodex can go from being a commensal organism to an amensal one. Amensal is a term that means a relationship in which one organism is causing problems for the organism it exists on and it is not benefiting from harming that organism. That's basically what can happen and Demodex create a scenario where you develop some sort of inflammatory skin condition due to usually too many Demodex mites. Hence demodecosis. Now you have a problem. It goes from being just hanging out there, no issues, to this is actually causing an issue. One of the main factors that puts somebody at risk for demodecosis is immunosuppression. So patients, for example, who have an organ transplant, they have to go on medications to suppress their immune system, they're at risk. Patients who have underlying health problems that lower their immune system, for example, cancer patients, especially those undergoing chemotherapy, which you know really weakens your immune system, and also patients who are undergoing like a bone marrow transplant, for example, for a blood cancer. But otherwise healthy adults also can develop skin problems related to Demodex who have basically overstayed their welcome. They become complicit in inflammatory conditions like acne, rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, perioral dermatitis. When we talk about demodicosis, there are two types. There's primary demodicosis where the skin problem is specifically and directly related to Demodex and Demodex alone. Then there's secondary demodicosis in which the individual has a skin problem and the Demodex are playing a role. They're maybe making the skin problem worse, but they're not the only causative factor. Treating the Demodex is helpful for improving the condition, but it will not necessarily cure it. It's a necessary component to address but that by itself, the Demodex mites is not the only thing going on. Examples of secondary demodicosis, as we've already talked about, include rosacea, as well as acne, seborrheic dermatitis, periorificial dermatitis. Many of you have struggled with this. Those little tingly bumps that happen around the mouth, they can also happen around the nose and around the eyes. Secondary demodicosis can creep up in patients who have used steroid creams to the face or have been on steroid medications, maybe some that they take by mouth, maybe some that they receive by an IV, or maybe some that they inhale for things like asthma. There is a skin condition called steroid dermatitis, kind of like rosacea. You get this redness, irritation, looks like rosacea. You might develop little acne-like bumps. Demodex are often over, overstaying their welcome in that condition, likely because the way the steroids impact the immune system maybe skews things where the Demodex get a tad too comfortable. Secondary demodicosis can also play a contributing role in certain ocular disorders, disorders of the eye, such as blepharitis, which is essentially inflammation of the eyelids. People who deal with recurrent chalazions, which are essentially plugged up oil glands in the eyelid, Demodex may be playing a role. Also, something called keratoconjunctivitis, inflamed red eyes, and meibomian gland dysfunction, chronic dry eyes. Demodex can be contributory to all of those issues. 
But let's focus on primary demodicosis because in my opinion, this is something that many of you might actually struggle with based on the types of questions that I get from you with regards to other things that kind of look like, well, primary demodicosis. So primary demodicosis, again, it's a skin problem solely due to demodex. Nothing else is going on. It's a standalone skin issue. And the name we give this, well, there are actually a few manifestations, but the name that we give, the one that I think a lot of you might actually deal with, is pityriasis folliculorum. Dermatology is all about the big fancy names for little scaly spiny bumps. Just take a look at this. Doesn't it look an awful lot, like an awful lot, like sebaceous filaments, right? I know a lot of you guys struggle with sebaceous filaments, but this is not sebaceous filaments. It's totally different. They kind of overlap in how they appear, but they have different underlying causes. So when it comes to distinguishing demodex from sebaceous filaments, how the heck do you know which one you're dealing with? Honestly, as a dermatologist, to me, they oftentimes look very similar. I'll tell you how you tell the difference is if you take a skin scraping, if you see a boatload of demodex under the microscope, bingo, there's your diagnosis. That's not a sebaceous filament. It's demodicosis. It's demodex. Also, your dermatologist can take that handheld microscope called a dermatoscope. They can look at your skin with it and they can see the little tails of the demodex protruding in that little thread light projection out of your pore. I know it sounds freaky, but it is what it is. Why is this happening? For whatever reason, some people get an overabundance of mites that tips the balance of things from commensal to amensal and you get, well, these spiny projections. In contrast to sebaceous filaments, these little projections, they often are symptomatic. They often are itchy, maybe kind of tingly, and there may be some underlying irritation associated with them. Sebaceous filaments are the kind of thing where I tell people, if, in order to get rid of them, put the mirror down. Because if you don't realize you have them, they're not going to cause any problems for you. And trust me, most people can't even see that you have them. That being said, there are many other treatments for sebaceous filaments. So don't, don't think that that's the only thing. Demodex mites, they do move around and that can lead to the symptoms of itch and discomfort. They're more active at night when the lights go out because they're bothered by the light. When the lights go out, then they move around a bit. And that may lead to symptoms of itch, like non-specific facial itch that keeps you up at night. Now, remember, there are a couple of other spiny skin problems that also can kind of look like this. Remember, I was telling you guys a while ago about trichostasis spinulosa. Trichostasis spinulosa is a condition where you have collections of little vellus hairs sort of stuck together. That's more of a black thread that comes out of the pore. With trichostasis spinulosa, those little collections of vellus hair cysts that are kind of stuck together at the pore opening, believe it or not, I know this will sound taboo to do. If you get one of those Biore pore strips and use it, it will actually remove those temporarily. They can come back. Check out my video on how to get rid of those because I give a lot more tips and tricks. But that's another one where a lot of people confuse it for sebaceous filaments or even for blackheads. And it's not. It's little collections of vellus hair cysts. There's also a condition that people who have a weakened immune system might develop. It's actually caused by a virus. It's called trichodysplasia spinulosa. So that is another thing to think about. You can also get these little spiny projections in the situation of vitamin A deficiency, fernoderma. It's referred to as toad skin. Check out my video on skin signs of low vitamin A. I go into more details there. I personally believe that spinulate demodicosis, it's little spines coming out of the skin due to demodex. I think it's a lot more common than we realize because this is not the kind of thing that most people wind up at the dermatologist for. I think it's a lot more common. Good news, many of the treatments that can help sebaceous filaments can also help this out as well. So it may not make a difference in the long run, right? Use the same thing, get the same result. One of the more helpful things that you can buy at the drugstore is a topical sulfur ointment. I'm a huge fan of the De La Cruz sulfur ointment. I'm also a fan of Prosacea. It's a gel, which also can be effective. It's called Prosacea because it's a rosacea treatment. Circling back, remember, Demodex can be a problem for rosacea. And sulfur, one of the ways in which it might help rosacea is by targeting the Demodex, but you know, it also can help in the case of Demodicosis as well. It may have some anti-mite action that helps to cut down on the burden of these little things. It's also anti-inflammatory and it's keratolytic. So it kind of will help to lessen the overall burden of stuff that the little mites snack on. Also, using your salicylic acid toners, face washes um, can help quite a bit.
bit because they likewise exfoliate the pore and help cut down on just food for the little mites. As a reminder, salicylic acid, whether it be a leave-on product such as a toner or a lotion or a face wash can also be helpful for sebaceous filaments because it helps to dislodge that little thread-like projection of built up dead keratinous material that just kind of gets stuck. There's azelaic acid. Azelaic acid can also help kind of cut down on the burden of material for the little mites and is anti-inflammatory. So it can definitely help these conditions out a lot. Then you have medications that are very specific to helping with the mites themselves, such as topical ivermectin. Topical ivermectin, the brand name is cilantro, can definitely help with, well, it's, it's FDA approved for rosacea, right? Again, demodex play a role in rosacea, but it's also very helpful here, obviously, for demodex. There's another anti-mite medication that can be applied to the skin, topical permethrin, used to treat head lice, but may help cut down on the burden of demodex mites that lead to these little spiny projections that can irritate you and cause itch and discomfort. I knew I was gonna start scratching my head. Here's one that might come as a shock, Selsun Blue. Topical selenium sulfide, which is the active ingredient in Selsun Blue shampoo. It's an anti-dandruff shampoo, right? Cuts down on the yeast, malassezia, that leads to dandruff, but it also may have some anti-mite action that can be particularly helpful for this condition. Then last but not least, some people do well with topical or oral metronidazole. Now, metronidazole is an antibiotic. It's used to treat rosacea topically. And while it's an antibiotic, antibiotics treat bacteria. This mite is not a bacteria. It does have a bacteria that lives on it, however, which may also be playing a role in all of these issues. It's not the mite, it's the little bacteria that lives on there. Also though, metronidazole applied topically or taken orally is anti-inflammatory, may help you out as well. So those are some treatments. I think it's easily confused with other spiny facial dermatoses like sebaceous filaments or trichostasis spinulosa, trichodysplasia spinulosa, fernoderma, although the likelihood that you all have vitamin A deficiency is hopefully not too likely, you know. Other, other skincare tip for you, if you are dealing with these, try increasing the frequency of cleansing to twice a day. That might also help. Twice a day with a facial cleanser, you don't wanna use something super drying, uh, just a mild facial cleanser also can help. Because remember, when you cleanse the skin, it helps to dislodge dry scaly buildup that ultimately will cut down on sort of the food for these little mites. All right, guys, I really hope this video was informative to you all with regards to these face mites. I know it's a really like unsettling topic, the concept of having face mites. I have a hard time even talking about them without, I don't know, randomly scratching and getting itchy. For the most part, they're not a problem. They're not a problem for most people, but they can become a problem. And I think that spiny demodicosis, I think it's a lot more common than we realize. I hope this video was informative to you guys. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.